Hey, hey, hey. Hello, everybody. This is Mike Ramos from the Your Car Dealer uh, podcast. Thanking you guys again for tuning in, joining us, telling your friends, and keeping uh, keeping an eye out for when we're, we're dropping uh, content. I think we're going to, at some point, real soon in the future, start getting a little bit more scheduled with the release of the content. I think it'll actually be Monday. Uh, or like a Sunday night or something like that. I think we'll probably be releasing content in the future, but um, I'll continue to hammer this part out and let you guys uh, know. And obviously, once I start to be able to turn the corner on getting you guys kind of more of a schedule of when this content will be coming out, believe me, you guys will be the first to know. Um, Tons of questions coming through this week on uh, with you guys hitting me on, on my DM here on Instagram. Uh, one of the fastest ways to really get a hold of us is is, um, is that it hits me right on my phone, right between my, my eyes. And uh, there you go, man. Your car dealer bond on Instagram. If you guys got questions, you guys want to hook up, let's connect there. Uh, you know, send me a little note there and uh, we had a question this week that came in about smogging cars and about how long smogs are good for specifically in California and if uh, you know somehow some way you got you got questions whether or not I got answers I, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill myself trying to figure it out for you so um, that's one thing that came up another thing funny enough I ended up uh, over the last few days, over the last few weeks, actually, uh, ran into an old uh, friend. He came into town, and this was somebody that I worked with. Matter of fact, even went to school at the same school with uh, in high school. He was a little younger than I was, so we were actually in in that same high school, but it totally, you know, at, at a different time. By the time I graduated, he was coming in as a freshman. So we didn't really hang out necessarily, but knew a lot of the same people, uh, had a lot of the same, uh, you know, some of the people that I knew and hung out with, their younger brother was this guy's best friend or something, you know, something like that. So there was a lot of connectivity with this gentleman. We had some great, uh, relived some great times, told some great stories, and ultimately I think some things, uh, gosh, it was, it was sort of enlightening in some different ways, but one of the things that <clears throat> this reminded me of was a story I figured I'd share with you guys, and uh, my apologies if, the, if the, uh, the sound isn't crisp and clean on this one, but uh, I've got the air blowing on me because it is hot as, uh, you know what, I'll make this one an explicit one. Uh, so it is hot as shit out here. Uh, let's see. Look at it. There we go. All right. So, yeah, this is, uh, so a story that came to mind and a gentleman that I knew, uh, ended up working with, unfortunately, after that, a guy named Brad Martin. Nice guy. Like Brad, but Brad was good at one sport. Brad was a great athlete. But he was good at he was really good at only one sport, one sport, and that was really what he was, what his deal was. He was a good, let's just call it a baseball player, and he was that was his thing. He was really, really good at baseball, but was a damn natural athlete, really good, really good athlete. Right, so tried out for other sports. Right, he he had an inkling to try his hand in a different uh, in a different game, and more often than not, Brad Martin, let's call this gentleman, found out sooner rather than later that it wasn't the same sport and it was much more difficult. And because Brad Martin had played baseball since he was a kid, he had, you know, he was hitting that thing in T-ball 
well, by the time he's in high school, yeah, you're a stud. But that doesn't mean... And, and you're athletic. You can take your shirt off in, the, in front of the girls and everybody at the pool is, is gawking at Brad Martin. And But again, I like Brad. That's not... that my My beef is not with Brad. My point is the story. And what Brad had, even though he was athletic, it wasn't able to translate over into other sports. Right? And it... It, it eventually... Uh, I didn't keep getting good, great contact with Brad, uh, but after high school, I ran into him. We actually worked together for a short time, and um, it seemed like Brad's move that he had picked up, where he he would try another sport for a little while, and mid-season he'd quit. I wasn't, I didn't, I'd never actually had even contemplating that. Uh, my whole team got disbanded one time when we, when I was playing Pop Warner, just because not enough kids on the team were showing up, so we had to forfeit too many games. And after you forfeit six games or whatever it was, then you get X nade out of the league. But I had never even considered uh, actually stopping in the middle of whatever. It was. And trust me, I had some stinker years of football. Uh, my first two years of of Pop Warner were horrific. I got tossed around like a salad, and it wasn't, you know, I I didn't like, man, I didn't like it those first two years, that's for sure. I was getting socked up, I was a disgusting fat body, it was, uh, there were no, there were not a lot of good times. Uh, for me personally, the team won a lot of games, but for me personally, I sucked. Um, and so, but I never really thought about, like, I, I'm just not going to play this. But I I didn't even think of, for some reason, never even crossed my mind, like, I'm not going to play next year. It was just like, yeah, this season sucks. I better do something to get better because, man, this can't happen again next year. And then I got a little better. And that, that really kind of fueled me to improve my game. Let me go and start jogging at night so I'm not as disgusting and fat. And, you know, I'm a little bit more agile. Uh, now, now I'm a little bit more more uh, able to make these tackles on defense. I don't just got some guy. I'm not, I'm not just laying around this guy's leg and this guy's dragging me down the street. I mean, th- this is, you know, and so, but it took hard work. But I don't know. It just it never really dawned on me that I, there was a possibility of just quitting midseason even. <clears throat> and... Brad was sort of known for that, whether or not it was a new sport, whether it was a new uh, a class, that a new elective Brad was going to get into. Uh, he was sort of a popular guy in, in school, which is the only reason I'd even take a notice. I wouldn't even noticed otherwise, maybe, but, you know, and, and he came out for my sport in particular and lasted about 20 seconds and then, you know, left that pretty fast. So I, I always, and then I would hear people, oh my God, Brad Martin, oh my God, what a stud, Brad Martin. And I'm thinking in the back of my mind, because I like Brad, again, I like Brad. I was like, Brad Martin? That's what I think of Brad and Martin. He's not like, you know, there was other guys that were two, three sport, you know, badasses when they were talking about, he wasn't even the best at his particular sport. So I was like, I don't know, he's in other sports. He may even be a multiple letter but it's not like, you know, he might be a, a varsity letter on multiple sports, but he's not, you know, he's not dogging it out like some of these other guys were doing. But they were dogging it out. They were <clears throat> they were in the thick of things. Maybe it was a 2-3 star athlete, but this guy was, I mean, like fantastic, man, at football. And then fantastic at running or diving or swimming or wrestling or whatever it is, right, or he was a one-star, he was a one, uh, a one-sport athlete, but he was just phenomenal, we had a kid that went straight to, uh, straight to the pros right out of high school, didn't skip in a triple-A ball, none of that, it's, uh, Wright, what was his name, Jared Wright, Jared Wright, uh, 1994, class of 1994 out of Catella High School, 
Jared Wright. No, 1994, Jared Wright's in Catella High School. 1995, he's pitching for the Cleveland Indians and actually pitched in the World Series that year. Um, but it, all that to say that there were way other, you know, different athletes, but for some reason, Brad Martin garnered quite a bit of, of, uh, of praise, you know, within the, the, the groups. And it just, all those years later, I look back and I, and I thought, you know what, Brad Martin, good guy. I ended up working with them later, quit that job after a short amount of time. And I just thought, man, half of the way that I got to where I was at was because I was able to kind of just stick it in there a little longer than everybody else. Everybody else is there either getting fired for being late one too many times or they're walking off the job telling somebody to fuck off and they're boss because they can't handle them anymore and they're, they think they're fuck. Why are you fucking writing me, dude? Why are you fucking writing? You're fucking always writing me, dude. That's it. I'm fucking out of here. Um... You know, I had a fair amount of those or, you know, somebody who had the keys to the building and, you know, they're they're in a position of management. And all of a sudden, Jesus Christ, the, the janitors are finding a, a case of, of empty beer at this guy's in this guy's office. And of course, they're telling the vice president, hey, man, just so you know, we found some extracurricular uh, activity here going on. You know, and they're thinking, wait a minute, we were there at seven, we were there till seven o'clock at night and we didn't see no case of beer. How in the hell is there a thing of beer? Oh, it's at this guy's desk who has the key to this place. Ah, we know what's going on with this guy. He's staying every single night to the wee hours of the morning. Gee, I wonder why he's such a hard worker. He's in here drilling somebody out at his desk. That's why I'm having a little party here at his, at his move, but... You know, I just ended up sticking around a hell of a lot longer than a lot of them. So stick to itness kind of was a, a a staple, if you will, for for me. And that, that was kind of the way that I had made it up was all the way up the food chain. It wasn't necessarily that I was um, quite a bit better than everybody else. It was just <laughs> one of the the president of the com one of the presidents of the company. Uh, that I worked for for many, many, many moons. Uh, big $300 million a year company. The president of the company tells me one day, you know what? 80% of you succeeding at this job in this career is going to be you showing up on time with a good attitude and getting along with everybody here that's here at work just like you that's what it's going to come 80% of this and there's going to be a portion of this that's going to come down to your uh, intuitiveness how energetic are you you enthusiastic about things do you take initiative you know are you intelligent do you have some semblance of decision making those types of qualities but ultimately it's 80% 80% that's a B man where I came from Every time I took a test, if I got an 80%, man, that was a B. That was damn good enough for me. But 80%, man, I don't got to do nothing else. Just show up on time, get along with everybody, and have a decent attitude. <whistles> but over time, man, that gets to people. They can't do it. They can't They can't cut the mustard, man. They can't. I don't know what it is. I don't, I, they, they, they get restless. I think they get restless. I think they need more action. I didn't need no more action. I had plenty. I got plenty of my action, but then I, you know, I, I knew I needed a great uh, a job, a good job, which that was. So I, you know, I just stuck around, man, until the wheels fell off, and they fell off for a bunch of other people, just not me. So uh, anyway, story of Brad Martin, just. Uh, I bet you're wondering what the hell is this Brad Martin story have to do with your car, used car dealers. What the hell is this guy telling a story about? Uh, not just about stick to itness. Not just about sticking with something. Actually, it is in a way, though. Uh, 
if you kind of take a step back from Brad Martin, Brad Martin, again, had a real expertise in what he did in baseball. <clears throat> Was really good. He just got, over time, I think he got bored, to be honest. I think he just got bored of doing it. He didn't, it wasn't challenging to him anymore. He was an all-star athlete. He was an all-county athlete, all-CIF athlete in baseball. And I just, I think it was just, a, it came a little too easy to Brad Martin at that point. And he just got bored with it and wanted to go look for something else, some other challenge out there. And as a business owner, as a used car dealer in 2019 and 2020, which is right around the corner, there's certain things that we're good at and, and we love doing and we kind of get ourselves, there's two, there's kind of these two types of, of dealers that I see, the ones that really love doing something, they get hemmed in on doing it, they're really good at it. Maybe it's social media. Maybe it's, ta- you know, talking head with whoever it is and just being able to, to turn the deal and make that connection with somebody that you're talking to. You got the gift of gab. Maybe it's it's a slightly different skill. Maybe you love looking at statistics and, and, and different analysis and numbers. You like to crunch numbers. You're the You're that guy, right? And, and there is some absolute merit. Believe me, there is merit to getting out of your comfort zone at times to just shake things up, to give yourself a fresh perspective, to make sure that you're looking at things from all angles. Right? But I would say that there, take that, chew, you're going to have to chew the meat and spit out the bones here. Um, there's also even more to be said for staying in your fucking lane. And I trust me, I every once in a while, I, I this happens to me, and I am try, I get out of my fucking lane, and I'm over here dicking around with trying to code my website or try to get this thing. Uh, something's bothering me, and I'm over here for, uh, trying to tinker around with it till I've got it dialed in and that ain't the way I meant say there's somebody else whose lane that is it's just going to take them a couple days for them to get it fixed and I think I'm going to do it in 20 minutes and then I turn around and 40 minutes later it still ain't done and maybe I fuck something else up along the way I, it, this is not I'm not pointing the finger at nobody but me here I'm just saying this is something that happens I see it. I see it in a lot of my dealers. I see it in us. I've seen it in the past. I, I, if I'm not careful, this will happen to me in my future. I've just got a natural propensity for certain things to bother me. Uh, you know, if I something's off, I got the name on my tongue, or I, I'm trying to figure out what it is, what something is, or I'm trying to something's off and I'm looking at it and it's bothering me and I know I could fix it if I could just sit there and try to figure it out for a few minutes or there's something new I want to try real fast because it's you know okay we started making videos and for too long I was a little too trying to get too wrapped up and oh my god this editing videos is fucking cool and I, I get all that man but I gotta stay in my lane there's a certain specific lane that once I get too far out of, and I have to vary out of it sometimes, I'm telling you guys, don't take that part for granted, I've got to vary out of that lane sometimes, for sure, absolutely, thousand percent, but to the extent that I can really balance this properly, and be mindful of it more than anything else, just to be mindful of it, I think, is is probably going to do you a lot of benefit just to understand that, hey, I'm getting a little too far off the reservation on this one. I spent a little too much time starting to screw around with my website here. I just learned how to mess around with WordPress and start to, you know, be able to modify pages and posts and all this other stuff. And man, now I'm, I'm doing it and it's, <clears throat> or maybe it's not that. Maybe it's just you figured out how to use pivot tables 
and now, oh my God, this opens up a whole new, you know, or, or you're, you know, you like creating images and, and artwork and things like that, and you created some software that's specifically for that execution. Whatever it is, whatever you've just discovered, make sure that you keep these things into perspective and make sure that you don't get too far out of your lane because the Brad Martins of the world, they get out of their lane and they get squashed. They get brought back to reality real fast that that ain't their sport, man. And, and you know, and him, he just got tossed around. And Brad just got tossed around a little bit when he got too far out of his lane and when he got a little too far off that baseball diamond and he waltzed his way over to the wrestling mat, he got ripped around a little bit and tossed around didn't break any bones didn't choke him unconscious or anything like that but worked his ass which is kind of, you know which is what you'd expect we wore his ass out for a couple of uh, a couple of uh, practices and then he said eh, not for me but that wasn't the first sport he did that I mean there was there was several other sports that he did that with and the point was is that Again, stay in your lane, because when you get out of your lane, you know, that's where, that part of you that's prolific, and we get, it, culture gets this wrong a lot of times. It's not just, we almost have a natural propensity to want to push somebody outside of the confinement of their expertise to almost see what else they got if they're a little more well-rounded than that. But yet, so good example of this is actors and actresses, right? You're constantly going to see these people getting interviewed saying, hey, what do you think about blah, blah, blah? And whether it's politics or whether it's uh, global warming or whether, <clears throat> fill in the blank, it doesn't matter. They're not asking them about acting. They're not asking him, hey man, what do you think about uh, uh, Hollywood and, and the future of Hollywood and how exactly it's shaping up in, in the next 20 years? The last 20 years was this. What do you think the next 20 years is? With artificial intelligence coming, what, how do you think that's going to impact the industry? Whatever it is. They, you're never really catching that stuff from those guys. That's not what they're pontificating on. These fucking idiots are talking about, yeah, you know what, and... and the, the globe is warming at a rate of 2% or, or it's gone up 2 degrees and I'm going to explain to you why this fucking idiot's going to really tell me that they know scientifically they've done the research not just they've heard some other dickhead talk about it I'm not talking about you being able to spout out something and parrot something that you've heard elsewhere I'm talking about if you really get pushed on the facts a little bit like, wait a minute, hold on a second, explain this to me then. If this is true and this is warming at this rate, do you know that it would have warmed at this particular percentage with nobody here? Or would that have been down a little? Would it have been completely the same? Where would it have been without us? Right, okay, now let's start talking about, well, now, now let's... Maybe you go a step further and you're they're pitching a bunch of ideas and they're going to start telling you how all those ideas are going to, that's how they're going to work. They're going to make magic happen. That's what they're going to do. They're going to make magic happen and they're going to make everything better. That's what these guys do when they're, when they're sitting there getting pulled out of their zone, out of their expertise, out of what they're really fucking good at. And you pull them out into these other ways, and they're telling you, "You're gonna make magic out of you. You're gonna, you're gonna have the answer to X, Y, or Z." This guy doesn't have the answer to X, Y, Z half the time. He's got to go in for for a second opinion. He's got to go in maybe for a first opinion. There are times when I don't know what the hell to do. Uh, you know, you could tell me in the business in in an area that I really, really understand well. There's times where you go, hey, what should we do on this? What should we do on this piece? I don't, you know what? That's a great question. I think we should ask so-and-so, and let's get their opinion. Then once I get that opinion and the rest of the facts, maybe I'll have a stronger sense of uh, and conviction for exactly what it is I should know. Because right now, you know what? I'm kind of in the air. But then it happens a fair amount of times. Point is, stay inside your lane. Stay in that 
uh, area where you're prolific and the things that happen there, you don't, the other part of what happens is that you fall victim to momentum uh, shifts and you say, you know what, I did get out of my lane. Brad Morton did get out of his lane for a little bit. Who cares? You know, he got tossed around. You know, he did, you guys did the salad bowl on him and that, that was it. Okay, fine. He was, you know, he had an understanding afterwards. He knew what he didn't want to do. He, he had a more clear respect for wrestling and other sports afterwards. I get all that. And the momentum shift... Although it doesn't seem like it's all that much, it doesn't seem like it's all, it's all that big of a deal. So what? So he, that period of time where Brad Martin was trying to search around and find himself, instead of practicing the sport that he was really, really good at to get a little better, maybe, or maybe perfect some part of his game that was hindering him. That didn't that prevented him from getting to the next because he was never good enough to get to playing pro ball like Jared Wright. So he wasn't that good. So one could argue that maybe a little more hard work in that particular area would have gotten him to a different spot in his career, to you know. And the and and the part that I mentioned about the momentum is that <clears throat> A lot of people, this doesn't just happen with adults, business owners, happens with kids, happens every day, where there's momentum that shifts at a certain point, and as you've had enough momentum shift on you, and eventually what happens, imagine you're on a boat, and the tide keeps shifting from one side to the next, you know? This can happen throughout the course of an hour, two, even three. Say you're going to be out there all day, all night, and you're going to be, you won't be back till tomorrow on this. You guys got a lot longer road than that. But in other words, there's a lot of opportunity. If you're on the other side, if if you were betting against you, there's a lot of opportunity for you to get frustrated, lose momentum, and just say, fuck all this. <clears throat> it was way too hard. I'm going to go back to my full-time job. That was easier. I just showed up, danced around a little bit, did this or that, collected a paycheck, and that was, that'll was that be that. Shit. I even got a sick pay. My guy used to have a 401k. I mean, wh- whatever it is, right? All that was probably easier. Just showing up every day to go to a job is a lot easier. I'll just work for this other guy's dealership or I'll just... All that, all these things are going to creep in your mind. Not when things are going great and you guys are banging and blowing and nobody can get to the bank fast enough because you guys are off the fucking hook. Nobody's talking about shutting a business down then or going back to their old job at that point. It's when times are tough. It's when you get too far out of your lane and now all of a sudden you used to be the guy that handled and and was, you know, the king of the the $4,000 car in your area. And you said, you know what? I think I could make a bigger profit if I move up to a $7,000, $6,500 car. I could pack a few more amenities in there, and I could, I could really start to, I could really start to move more. more you know, as, even if I move the same amount of profit, I can move a lot more profit that way. What, what do you, you know? And you try, you get out of your lane, and you figure out that your market isn't susceptible to that change. Or it wasn't susceptible to going through that change with you, let's just say. Because maybe for the last four years, they've seen you as the discount $4,000 car guy. They don't trust you with the $7,000 purchase, perhaps. I don't know, maybe that's not it. Maybe there's not enough $7,000 purchasers. Maybe at that point, they buy new, you know, there's, there's a variety of reasons. But the point is, is sometimes when you guys get too far outside of your lane... You pay a different price than getting tossed around a mat for a couple of practices. And when that guy quits and walks away from that and that and a sport like that in high school, who cares? Keep it moving. You guys do that in the business world. You go get licensed. You go through all this process, all this money, all this expenditure to go get licensed. And then what? To just throw it away? 
that's why at that point quitting is that's all, that's all that's why a lot of I think in Brad's case he never wanted to quit baseball he liked he liked baseball I know he did but he just wanted to try other stuff it's almost I don't know it's a very natural thing I think especially for guys um, but he, he wanted to try something else. He was bored with this one thing that he had gotten to the top of his food chain on. And to get good takes a lot of work a lot of times. And, you know, but you can do a lot of that work by just spending the time doing it as a kid. So if you start early enough in sports, six, seven years old, and you're already whacking it around, well, by the time you get to high school, you got such a drop on everybody else in this area. You know, you got better vision. You've got better instincts. Your reaction times are different. And those are things you're not going to be able to teach a first-year kid, right? So, I mean, he had advantages that I think were just a matter of... They were a matter of time, you know? They were just time spent doing this. But then once you've invested all this time, you feel vested. <clears throat> Someone like maybe even he felt vested. I'm not gonna quit baseball. I've been doing this too long. I just want to go try some other stuff. Right? He was sick and tired of baseball. I want to go try some other stuff. I'm still gonna be on the team when season comes around. I'm not that sick of it. But he never really quit. Eventually he quit. You know, he got to. I think he. I, I think he might have played some double A ball. To be honest with you. Um. Might have only been single A. I don't think he made it to triple A. Um, but the but the part of what I'm trying to really prevent you guys from is the frustration and the momentum shift that comes from you guys taking consecutive losses. If you guys have a losing month this month and you try this new floor plan, it doesn't work. You lose two, two three grand this month. Okay, fine. Next month, you didn't figure out that that was the problem, so you you spent another month on that new flooring plan. Lost another two, three, four grand this month. Or you're in the hole six, seven grand for the last two months, maybe even more. Now what? <clears throat> right? Are you going to have the wherewithal? Even if you do install the new plan, <coughs> your new flooring plan. Maybe it doesn't fix your problem overnight. Maybe for the third month in a row, you take another two, three thousand dollar loss, and then the slow see, you know, one of the slower months of the year comes. Maybe you have a decent month, you kind of flatten out. You're not losing money. You're not really gaining money, and then you have another loss. Or these kind of momentum shifts, you've kind of created now momentum, but it's in the wrong way, right? And this is sort of a almost call it like a, a, a windmill effect because it you get some air that catches a certain part of that windmill and it propels it and then you get another piece of air that propels a different part of that same windmill and eventually this thing's going pretty fast but it's the compilation of air Jesus Christ it's a compilation of air hitting in a bunch of these different things, making that momentum be created, if you will. And in this case, I notice a lot of times it's a matter of um, a little too much momentum in the negative direction has now created a difference in your mindset. You used to be a lot more aggressive. You used to think that you could pull it off. You used to be so confident and sure of the business. You're not any anymore. Right. Once it's tough to remain that confident with that level of confidence when you are taking those kinds of, of consecutive losses. So all that to say, if I could stay in that lane, it's gonna help that frustration level and it's gonna help keep momentum on your side. <clears throat> the last thing you need in business is to have a bunch of obstacles where there should be free space for you just to move. Don't hem yourself in. Don't start getting involved in these other business models that you got nothing to do with. 
and I've fallen victim to it. It's the only reason I, I know, I, I see it, I know it clearly, and I know the issue it creates. You know, we were going to get involved in, in taking some of the profits of the business and taking it and putting it in the real estate. I'm not a real estate investor, but it made sense. But all of a sudden, I'm out of my lane. And luckily, at the last minute, I kind of figured out, and things didn't fall into place, thankfully. It might have been disastrous. We were just going to start flipping, you know, smaller uh, beat-up houses. But I could tell you that the concept of it itself was, I was almost doomed to fail. Might have been a wild disaster, a wild hit. But I get the sense, now knowing what I know, there's also a really good chance that I would have been competing with people who really know what they're doing in that space and would have eaten my lunch and maybe have turned my momentum on its ear, right? So anyway, that's one to grow on. Stay in your lane. <clears throat> Get real good at what your lane is. Get real good at spotting when you're outside or veering outside of your lane. The less time you even spend, spend thinking about it, the better off you're going to be. That, that's for sure. So um, anyway, all that to say that uh, you guys keep on uh, keep on keeping on out there. You guys are are doing big things. I, I, I'm hearing some of the success stories. Uh, I'm also hearing some of the some of the downside of the business and that, you know, there's struggling dealers out there because of one reason or another. They got too far outside of their lane. They weren't well enough uh, funded. They maybe didn't have the right education up front. I, I say all that to say that to the extent that we can certainly give you guys a hand with you know, a better understanding of the business, answering some questions, helping you guys along, by all means. This is Mike at Your Car Dealer Bond. Feel free to reach out to me. My, um, our 866-800 number is 866-357-4405. Again, it's it's 866-357-4405. If you guys have a, uh, an episode, uh, you know, you think that, hey, this is this is some content I'd love to hear a little more about. You should make a, a, a podcast episode about this. I'd love to hear it. Maybe it's a shorter type of question. I'm going to make a video out of it. You know, we, we release both. Yeah, by the way, Your Car Dealer Bond on YouTube. And check it out. Go subscribe. Hit that subscribe little bell uh, also on there, which will tell you guys when we're putting out more content. Uh, anything I can do to continue to help support the, the used car dealer industry, I want to do because I know that DMV isn't doing it. They're not doing their job. All they want to do is be the devil. They want to come in, bust chops. They want to come in as the authoritarian. They want to come in. And I'm not saying there's not good inspectors out there. Of course, there's good teachers. There's good inspectors. But also... There are some real stinkers out there who are just looking to collect a paycheck and be a prick in the process and make your life a lot miserable, more miserable than it has to be. And those inspectors are out there also, and there's a lot of them. And they're fucking lazy. I said it. Now what? Matter of fact, I'm, I'm, about, <clears throat> I'm about 45 days outside of going to go meet with the, the director of the DMV. Uh... Gene Shimoto had, had just uh, had just retired, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna catch up with this new gal from the uh, director of the DMV, and I'm gonna give her a piece of, of my mind, and I'm gonna point her to some content. I have one called uh, "Does the DMV Hate Used Car Dealers?" Um, I got, it's an episode on my podcast. It's a video episode. I'm gonna tell her, "Hey, listen, watch this." You know, this is this is exactly what I'm up against. This is what you guys are up against, and this is what I'm talking. I'm talking shit. I'm finally somebody's finally exposing what you guys do to dealers. And although I can't walk in with a video camera and tape the whole damn thing, I'm telling everybody what I know. So um, anyway, to the extent I can continue to give back, like I said, uh, your car dealer bond across all platforms, whether it's Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, Mike Ramos on, on LinkedIn, Facebook too. I got uh, I got that. Um, and then you guys have, I think, my email address, Mike at yourcardealerbond.com. Mike at yourcardealerbond.com. 
And although I never like to make a huge commercial out of this, if you guys do need a, a, a surety bond for your car dealership, you're just getting going and, uh, and you need to save some money on that surety bond, I, I'm the guy. You're, you, we, <laughs> we wholesale bonds to, to insurance agents that are going to turn around and sell it to you. So you sort of, it's a dirty little secret, but you kind of cut out the middleman when you go through us. Uh, in, in most cases. So, uh, your car dealer bond, if you need exactly that, a car dealer bond. Uh, and like I said, let's connect. Uh, thanks again for, for telling your friends and, and helping me spread the word here about the Your Car Dealer podcast. Uh, it is growing and we are excited about the future for it. And I'm excited about your guys' future and to continue to help uh, invest into it. You guys take care out there. Have a great week. Keep slanging them cars and uh, look out for the next one. Thanks so much.